Hello, flying solo tonight. Uh, welcome to, uh, I don't know what we call this, TSR TV, TSR After Dark. <laughs> just, uh, I don't know, I was like, uh, yeah, I was just sitting around. It's like, hey, let me do a, let me do a live video here just talking about uh, the post AAC media day and just give you some of my thoughts. Uh, it, was, uh, it was actually pretty cool uh, being in Texas for the first time. For the AAC Mini Day it was uh, in Rhode Island before. Kind of missed the clam bake, but uh, yeah, Texas wasn't so bad. I mean, if you liked the uh, 105 to, uh, degree weather, yeah, it wasn't that bad. But you know, it was fun. Uh, Memphis brought uh, Seth Hennigan, Jacob Likes, Simeon Blair, and Jalen Allen to the media day. It was fun, uh, you know, talking to the talking to the players. Uh, I think everyone. Was real excited. Uh, you know, Jalen Allen brought that smile. I mean, uh, interviewing him, he was a he's a terrific interview, and you know, he has some, he has some uh, pretty interesting things to say about this year. You know, he talked about the depth of the defensive line. Uh, you know, so that's that's something that uh, he said that, that that's something that I, not necessarily that, that he's not used to. But it, it was something that's different this year, and he talked a lot about the depth. Uh, Seth Hennigan talked a lot about, uh, you know, the uh, the receivers that that uh, are ready to step up. Jake, when I talked to Jacob Likes, he was uh, he was excited about the offensive line because when you take a look at the offensive line, I, I think we can all agree that's one thing that uh, really needed to improve on. Uh, but he really likes the interior uh, offensive line. And we'll go through, um, you know, my my predictions for the uh, two deep chart that I wrote that story, put it out, I think, yesterday or this morning. I can't remember right now since it's uh, a little bit late. But uh, let's get into the the media poll that uh, that <laughs> that was uh, that was put out. And there was, there was something shocking on it to me. So let's take a look at it real quick. You know, I have no problem Tulane being first, UTSA second, SMU third, uh, Memphis fourth. You notice that little one by Memphis. Uh, <laughs> there's only only one guy in the media that uh, believed Memphis can win this whole thing uh, this year, and that was me. And, uh, you know, I was on Greg Gaston's show and, and told him why I feel Memphis can win it all. I think the schedule is uh, you know, sets up nicely for Memphis because the, the tough game for Memphis is at home, but you know, we'll go through that in a little bit. Cause I'll, I'll, we'll go through game by game and I'll give my, my picks. But as far as the, the media day, uh, I mean, it was great. Uh, but take a look at that number eight UAB. I still haven't found the person who voted for UAB first place. I mean, that's just, that's insane. I mean, I, I spoke to, uh, Trent Dilfer, I mean, great guy. I think he's going to do good things, but not this year. No, not not this year at all. Um, so let's go through the uh, the picks real quick. It's, it, this isn't going to be a long episode. It's going to be very short since it's late at night, and I just I'm just doing this on the whim, just just having fun. But uh, let's take a look at the uh, the schedule here, and this is when you take a look. I mean, it, it's, it sets up so nicely for Memphis. Now, when I did my picks, if you go to tigersportsreport.com, it's in our uh, message boards. If you're not a member, go ahead and sign up. Uh, if you're a Highland 100 member, we have a, a special promotion right now where you get your first year for $25. Use the promo code H100. But take a look at that first game. I, I think everyone agrees that first game is uh, going to be a win. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I, I think it's going to be a complete blowout. And this is something I want to see, you know, uh, some some backups to play. Let's get, let's get Tevin Carter in there. Let's get him some playing time because, uh, you know, God forbid you know, anything happens to Hennigan, you don't want to throw in your QB2 out there with no experience. So I think this is a game that uh, Tevin Carter should uh, play in, at least in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I think we'll see four or five different running backs play this game as well. Going to the next week, Arkansas State. That, I don't think it's going to be an easy win because Arkansas State, uh, you know, especially at Arkansas State, it, it'll uh, pose a pose some challenges there. But 
still, it should be a win. Memphis on, on paper, you know, Memphis is is the better team. Going to the uh, next game, Thursday, September 14th, uh, home against Navy. Yeah, Na- Navy's tough, man, uh, with that uh, triple option. But it's still, it's a game Memphis can win, and I do have them winning. So at this point, I have them 3-0. 1-0 in conference with that Navy win. Next up, uh, you travel to Mizzou. It's supposed to be a home game. Won't rehash that one, but, uh, you know, drink wits, you know, we'll play anybody anywhere. And obviously that's not true, but uh, since they moved the game to uh, St. Louis. But this is a game, uh, I-, I think Memphis is going to be up for this game. But as of right now, I have it as a loss right now. I, I think they Memphis can keep it close, but right now, let's just say this is a loss. So at this point, I had Memphis 3-1. They come back home and play Boise State. That's a, that, that's a winnable game. I know it's going to be a good game, uh, but uh, Boise State has a, a tough opening road before they get to that Memphis game. They, they open up at Washington. Then they host UCF. And they also host uh, North Dakota, which is, you know, pretty good FCS team. And they travel to San Diego State, and then they come to Memphis. So, I mean, it's quite possible that Boise State's going to be one and three when they come to Memphis. So, as of right now, I have that as a win for the for the Tigers, and they'll be four and one at this point. They have a bye week. And then that first game, I think this is going to be a pivotal game, Friday, October 13th against Tulane. It's uh, it's, it's going to be a tough game. But when you take a look at these teams, you, you know, for the past six years, I believe, there uh, it, it's been alternating wins. You know, Memphis Tulane, Memphis Tulane, Memphis Tulane. And, you know, Tulane won last year. So, you know, it's Memphis' turn. And they're playing at Memphis. So, to me, that, that should be an easy one. Now, I didn't say easy one, but it should be a win. Then they go at UAB, Battle of the Bones. I mean, that's back. Trent Dilfer, <laughs> he, he had some lively things to say at the uh, media day when I was talking to him. He's, his first thing is, let's pour some gasoline on this fire. He loves this rivalry, and uh, he should. Uh, UAB owns this series. I mean, 10 to 5, but not this year because Memphis on paper, is just they're just a better team. So at this point, I have Memphis being 6 and 1. Then you uh, go at North Texas. The mean green, I, I, you know, I don't think they'll pose a threat uh, this year. So I have it as a Memphis win. So Memphis is going to be seven to one. Then you come home and you get, uh, you're against South Florida. You know, I think Alex Golish uh, will do well at South Florida, but this is his first year, and it's going to take him a couple of years to to get uh, South Florida where they were back in like mid two thousands, uh, where they were really good. I think they were ranked number two at one point. Uh, but that's going to be a win. So, I mean, as of right now, you're looking at it, and Memphis is 8-1. and one, And that's not far-fetched. I mean, you look at this schedule. Like I said, it sets up nicely. November 11th, you're at Charlotte. Charlotte's awful, folks. I mean, I don't care how many times that their head coach po- uh, pounds his fist on the podium and says he's going to remember that they were picked last. I mean, they should be picked last. They were picked last, and they will finish last. So. Memphis should win that one easy. So they're nine and one at this point. Next is your your second tough game in the uh, American Conference. It's uh, home against SMU. Listen, if Memphis is nine and one going into this game, uh, I mean that's the confidence will be sky high. So I mean it's it's it should be a great game. And you know Memphis plays tough at home, and you know before. SMU gets to the Memphis game, you know, they, they have to go through, I mean, earlier in the season, they, they're at Oklahoma, they're at TCU, uh, they're at East Carolina, which is not uh, not an easy place to play. So they have some uh, some tough games, so they could be banged up. But as of right now, I have this as a, as a win for Memphis, and that's going to be 10-1. Then you travel to Temple to finish out the season. And uh, I still say Joey still caught it. And, and, you know, they win this game. They're 11 and one. I mean, tell me I'm wrong. Show me where, show me where I'm wrong. Cause uh, this is all, 
I mean, it's all right there for, for Memphis. And the, the players know it. You know, when I when I was speaking to them at the AAC Media Day, they, they, just, they, they know this is an opportunity to really shine because you don't have UCF, you don't have Houston. They're, they're, you know, they're off the schedule. They're off the bigger and better things. So when you, uh, when you take a look at this American conference, I mean, any of the top four teams, let's take a look at that media poll again, you know, really Tulane, UTSA, SMU, and Memphis, any one of those teams can win the American conference this year. You, uh, Tulane, when you take a look at their schedule, uh, they only they have two uh, t- uh, games against the top four, uh, you know, in the AAC. So they have to play at Memphis, and they're home against UTSA. You know, I, I think they can go one and one. I think they'll lose Memphis, and but the, it's quite possible they can beat UTSA. Uh, you take a look at UTSA schedule; they only have one. A tough game against a top four opponent in the AAC, and that's uh, Tulane. So, you know, and I think since it's at home, I give the slight edge to UTSA. When you take a look at the SMU schedule, they have one game against the top four opponent in the AAC, and that's Memphis, and they travel to Memphis. So that's why I say, you know, I, I like Memphis's schedule. Everything sets up nice for them. So when I have Memphis playing UTSA for the conference championship, and I think Memphis can win. I mean, it, it, it's all right there for him. Then, uh, you know, we'll see if I'm right. We'll see if I'm wrong. I've, I've been wrong before, but I really do. I really like this Memphis squad. I've said it before on uh, Greg Aston's show that, you know, everything that there was a question mark on uh, for all the positions except for tight end, because I think tight end is, is one where, you know, you're really going to need this fall camp to, to see what shakes out. But you had question mark on offensive line. You know, they went into the transfer portal and, and they got some offensive linemen. You know, I think Marcus Henderson, he's – I think he'll battle for, uh, you know, starter at uh, right tackle. You know, we'll see. But, uh, you know, they went to the portal and got some wide receivers. Um, so, uh, Demir Blankemsey, uh, I, I, I'm, really, I'm really high in this kid. I think he's going to shine. Uh, Tusky Dove from Missouri, uh, you know, same high school as uh, Seth Hennigan, a little older than Seth, but uh, I don't, they, have, they didn't play with each other, but they obviously in the same high school. So there's camaraderie there. So the, the wide receivers, you know, they, in my opinion, they hit home runs in the transfer portal that a little bit different than years past. Um, you know, Simeon Blair, they needed help at safety with uh, Quindell Johnson uh, graduating and, and off you got Simeon Blair uh you know he was at the AAC media day he was a great interview he's very very excited about this season uh you know his production I think is going to go you know through the roof I mean he was very productive for Arkansas and you know I I think with the level down because I mean let's face it AAC is not the level of the SEC (laughs) I mean so he's playing you know uh a step down in competition, but his, you know, he's not stepping down in his talent. I mean, it, he's, I mean, he's good enough to play in the SEC. He's definitely good enough to play in the AAC. Um, so let me take a look at uh, the two deep chart that, uh, that I wrote about. Oh yeah. It was earlier today. I believe I put it out predicting the two deep chart. So if you haven't seen it, go to uh, tigersportsreport.com and you'll be able to, uh, Click on it. It's the, the first article there. No surprise at quarterback. You know, Seth Hennigan, there's just zero chance that anyone will beat him out. I mean, he's you know, he's definitely the starter. Backup, though, uh, you know, there there could be a little battle between Tevin Carter and Cunningham. But, I, I you know, I think Tevin Carter, uh, I, I'm, I'm high in this kid. I hope he gets some playing time this year to – so, you know, Tiger fans can see what he could do. Get him some Wildcat, uh, you know, just, just something. Get him on the field uh, so we can see what he can do. Running back, you know, this one's a little hard uh, to predict. Uh, you know, you brought in Blake Watson. Uh, he's nearly a 1,000-yard rusher every single year for the past two years at Old Dominion. Uh, you have uh, Jay Dunker uh, already 
um, already here. And then Sutton Smith. I think between those three, I think Blake Watson, you just, I predict he'll, he'll start. And it may be, you know, I know the coaching staff would love to have one running back just to stand out and be the guy. But I feel this year is still going to be running back by committee because you have so many running backs, uh, you know, on the, on the roster. But to me, Blake Watson, one, Jay Ducker, two, and Sutton Smith, three. Probably, uh, you know, Thomas would be the fourth. And you may see two and two. You know, just uh, run it back by committee, but but in groups. But, uh, you know, we'll see on that. Wide receivers, uh, as I mentioned before, you know, when we talked to, to Hennigan at the media day, he was excited uh, about these uh, receivers. Rock Taylor, I think, is going to have an outstanding year. I mean, it's just, you know, we've been waiting for Rock Taylor to break out, but there was folks before him. So now, you know, he's there. He's the, he's the guy. And I think he'll be, you know, wide receiver one. I think Joe Skates will be there at, at the other wide receivers uh, spot. And Tux, uh, Tusky Dove will be your uh, third wide receiver. So those three, I think, are going to be your starters. Backing them up, I think it'll be Blankemsey. He's a redshirt junior. Um, Destin Thomas, uh, Tennessee kid. Uh, you know, he's a redshirt freshman. I think he's ready to step up and get more playing time. And Kobe Drake. Uh, you know, he, he caught on uh, late last season. So don't be surprised uh, if, if he got, you know, some balls thrown his way. And now tight end. See, this is where I'm least confident in my picks. But I have Anthony Lanthier starting. He's got, he had some, some playing time uh, a little bit last year. You know, and fall camp is going to be, you know, it's going to be something to watch with the uh, tight end position because there's there's a few tight ends. Uh, I think Austin Smith is another one that uh, that could uh, pop in there and, and get some playing time. Um, Brandon Doyle, uh, I have him. I have Lanfear one and Brandon Doyle, but there's some there's, you know two Colorado I think tight ends you know transferred in. So watch the tight end at fall camp. So but as of right now. Pre-fall camp, you know, prediction. I have Lanthier one and Brendan Doyle uh, two. Left tackle. Pounders, I, I think everyone is waiting for, for Pounders to be that dominant left tackle. And, you know, he showed a, a little bit. Uh, he showed some glimpses last year. Uh, but this year he's, you know, he, he's got to be the guy. You know, and we'll see. He'll He'll have every opportunity, in my opinion, to – uh, to be that left tackle, and as long as he stays healthy, he's there. Now, for for backing him up, usually there's a one offensive line that no one talks about that usually comes in and gets some some playing time. I know early on, like Dylan Parm, uh, like I think it was uh, sophomore season, if I'm not mistaken, uh, that he he popped showed a little bit on the depth chart. No one was really talking about him, and he. You know, fall camp came around, and you know, all of a sudden he's on the two deep chart. Um, but you know, Silverfield has has a knack over the years to finding offensive linemen who are not highly rated and developing them. I think this year, uh, the one we may see is Ole Miss uh, transfer Jake Greer. Uh, I'm, you know, from everything I've heard, he's progressing nicely. So I'm picking him to be that that second, that, that backup, but to be that offensive line when no one's talking about that may, you know, pop up on that uh, two deep chart and, you know, next year or so may crack the starting lineup, but we'll, we'll see. Left guard, I have Jonah Gamble. I mean, he started uh, last year. No reason to think uh, he won't be the starter this year. And backing him up, you know, I predict Xavier Hill. Uh, he's, he's one that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty highly on as well. Redshirt sophomore uh, coming from LSU, I believe it was. Um, so we'll see. I, you know, I don't think he'll unseat uh, Jonah, but uh, yeah, we'll see. I mean, there's, I think the offensive line is another unit that uh, really needs a good fall camp to, to showcase and separate some of these guys. Center Jacob likes. I mean, I don't, uh, you know, is the only way I think likes is not starting if he's injured. I think, you know, he's pretty much a lock there at center. Uh, backing him up, I, you know, Braxton offered from, I think he was Alcoa, Tennessee. He's, uh, 
you know, he's got he got some playing time last year, I believe. Not not too much, uh, memory serves me correctly, but uh, you know, he's a solid backup uh, just in case Likes ever does go down. Right guard, Davion uh-huh. Carter, Redshirt Jr. I, I hear nothing but great things, uh, you know, coming from the spring camp. He played. He, he got progressively better as the games went on last year, and you know, I I, I don't see him being unseat by uh, Mitchell Gildahas. I think Gildahas is is a, a solid backup, but look for Damian Carter to solidify that right guard, right tackle. And this is this is where uh, the battle is going to be, in my opinion, for the offensive line. You know, Marcus Henderson and Terrence McLean. Terrence got some starts last year. You know, we'll see how it stands out. You know, before before fall camp prediction, I'm I'm hedging my bets on Marcus Henderson winning that battle, but I would not be surprised if Terrence McLean wins it. You know, he's the redshirt sophomore. He has more uh, game experience. Uh, he's he's been at Memphis, so he, he knows the system. Um, so. Look for that that battle to be uh, a fun one to watch. Uh, going on the defensive side, uh, defensive end, Hamilton, Kermonte Hamilton, Redshirt Jr. Ah, it's, it's been a while since Memphis had a dominant uh, defensive end that just really could take over a game. Martin Effetti comes to mind, I think, as the last one that uh, that could really you know be a game changer. I think Hamilton uh, has made big strides. And look for him to have a, a you know, a, a fantastic year. I'm, I'm really excited about this. All the defense, nose tackle. You know, I can see Zai Brockington. He got some, uh, he got some playing time last year. He could be the starter, but uh, Rambo Hunter, Derek Hunter, uh, is one I'm predicting that will be the starter. But again, fall camp, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see how it shakes out. Defensive tackle, Josh Ellison. Uh, Kid came over from Oklahoma. Uh, nothing but uh, good things I hear from him. Uh, you know, dominant, you know, force down there on the defensive line. He had, a, uh, you know, it's something Memphis really needs, this defensive line to get after the quarterback, get some pressure. And, you know, if you get some pressure on the quarterback, that kind of relieves the, the DBs. Uh, I know I was – I've been harping on the secondary – Last year, and I even said that the secondary needs to step up more than the defensive line. But, you know, I, I think I've uh, changed my tune on that. I think the defensive line needs to step up more than the, the defensive backs this year. But Josh Ellison will, will, will help that. And I think Joshua White, uh, the redshirt freshman, I think uh, he'll get the backup slot uh, defensive tackle. At the other defensive end, I have Jalen Allen. You know, he was at the uh, AAC Media Day. He, he has an infectious personality. Uh, you can't help but to smile when you're around him. He, he loves the game. Uh, I mean, look for him to have another big year. Backing him up, I have Jalen Joyner, uh, the defensive end that came over from FAU. Outside linebacker or weak side linebacker, whatever you want to call it, but uh, just the linebacker on the outside. Uh, Chandler Martin, uh, redshirt sophomore. Yeah, coming from ETSU, I think this – I think this kid is going to shine at Memphis. I mean, he had a he had a great uh, year at uh, ETSU. Uh, I know this is a step up, a, a level up, but uh, he has he just has a knack for the football. He, in my opinion, he has a high football IQ. So look for him to have a a, a very good year. Backing him up, I think Bryce Edmondson, and uh, Edmondson, you know, is uh, is you know a decent backup. I mean, he. He can push for some playing time. I just think Chandler Martin beats him out. Uh, and we'll, but we'll, as with all these, we'll see at fall camp. Middle linebacker, Canton Arku. Uh, he comes back for his redshirt senior year. Uh, he got progressive. He's another player that got progressively better as the year went on. Um, so, yeah, he's definitely the starter. And I have a true freshman backing him up. Watch out for Camelo uh, Overton. I really think that he has a chance to really steal some uh, some playing time and maybe leapfrog some folks to get that backup at middle linebacker. The other outside linebacker, since you're Evans, fifth year senior, uh, you know he had a he had a decent year last year, tackling machine. Look for him to uh, be that starter. Backing him up, I have uh, Derek Smith. 
Uh, he's a uh, redshirt sophomore. And now we go to the cornerbacks. And here's where one that uh, I know, you know, is – can Greg, Greg Ruman, is he going to be a cornerback or he's going to be a safety? We'll see because he can play anywhere in the secondary, Greg Ruman. So with the, you know, I know Simeon Blair is coming in and he's, he's going to take one of those safety spots. I just, I just feel, you know, I'd like to see what Greg Ruman can do at safety. And so we'll see if he does play safety. So I don't have him at cornerback. So at cornerback pre-fall camp, I have Davian Ross. He's a senior. Backing him up, I have Cameron Smith. The other corner spot, I have Malik Feaster. Uh, you know, he played at uh, Jacksonville State and FSU for a year, but coming over, uh, I think he can take a, a spot there. But Julian Barnett, um, you know, I know he's been at Memphis for for uh, a year or two, and we're waiting for him to really pop. Uh, and I'm, I know when he came from, I think, uh, Michigan State, there was high hopes for him. Uh, just – I don't, um, just hasn't uh, developed or hasn't had the playing time or the impact that uh, many fans had hoped when he came over. So we'll see if uh, this is the year that, uh, that he has a breakout season. But as of right now, pre-fall camp, I have him backing up Feaster at quarterback. And the safeties, as we said before, Simeon Blair, and I have Greg Rubin as the other safety. But backing them up, I have uh, Jalen Johnson, Richard Sophomore, and Joel Williams. So what do you think? If you uh, disagree with me, come to the uh, Tiger Sports Report message boards. You know, tell me, tell me if I'm right. Tell me if I'm wrong. And, and give me your thoughts on the year. I have Memphis going 11-1 and one and uh, winning the AAC. Uh, so, yeah, what, what do you think about that? Um, I know Silverfield, um, you know, everyone says he, this is like a, he has to have so many wins, eight wins, nine wins, uh, you know, whatever. You know, at the AC media day, uh, he was very, very relaxed. Uh, just it, it, it seemed like a, a different coach. I mean, just he's uh, to me, he's growing into himself as a head coach. And, you know, I think this is going to be a great, a great season for him. But um, tell me what you think. And until then, you guys have a good one.